Hi guys, my name is Jamil Ahmad and today we are going to discuss about the cellular engine. What is this cellular engine? Let's go, uh, we are going to discuss that. Cellular injury occurs when stress exceeds cell's ability to adapt. In the previous lecture, we discussed that when the stress will be applied on the organ, then organ first will also show homeostasis. But if there is a change, increase, decrease, or change in the stress, then organ will show something else. They will show the growth adaptations. So let's suppose that in case of increase in the stress, cell will show hyperplasia and hypertrophy. In case of decrease of stress, cell will show the hypertrophy. But in case of change in stress, cell will show the metaplasia. What in this case that if the stress exceeds cells ability to adapt so in this case cell has uh, in this case stress has been exceeded so when the stress will be exceeded so in this case organ will not go uh, homeostasis and organ will not go adaptations rather cell will go to cellular injury just our main topic cell will show the cellular injury in this case if the stress exceeds the cells ability to adapt so how can we determine this exit limit Simple question is that, how can we determine that stress has exceeded exceed the cell's ability to adapt? The answer is here that likelihood of injury depends on the type of stress, severity and type of cell factor. Three things will affect this, three things will determine this point that. It also depends upon the type of stress. Yes, type of stress also affected the exceed limit. Let's suppose that inflammation. Let's suppose that inflammation. Inflammation is a kind of stress, but in mostly cases, inflammation moves the organ towards the adaptations. So it doesn't cross the exceeded limit in case of inflammation. It's also a stress. But in this case, cell will like to undergo the adaptation, not cellular injury. So let's second say it depends upon the severity. Yes, yeah, severity. What is this? In case of severity, if the stress is less severe, then it will cause the adaptations less severe adaptations but it is more severe than it will cause the cell injury less severe it, it, less severe will be that the adaptation but more severe it will cause the cell injury i would like to give an example now suppose that if we cut the blood supply of kidney blood supply of kidney very slowly very slowly we are cutting the blood supply then it is a less severe a less severe will adapt towards the adaptations organ will go towards adaptations but in the same case more severity if we cut the blood supply suddenly then cell will undergo cell injury cells of kidney will undergo cell injury so it is the severity that less severe cut the blood supply slowly slowly it is less severe the organ will go undergo adaptations if we cut the blood supply suddenly then it has been more severe the cell will go undergo cell injury it will not adopt the adaptations it will not go towards the cellular adaptation so next is the type of cell affected yeah that's also a point type of cell affected it's it's that for example that and nerve cells for example that nerve cells in case of nerve cells nerve cells are very very affected to stress they are very sensitive they can withstand hypoxia just for three to five minutes if there is a hypoxia just for three to five minutes then nerve cells will undergo cellular injury but uh, but opposite to nerve cells, there are skeletal cells. Opposite there are the skeletal cells. This is also a type of cell which is being which it has to be affected. When the skeletal cells are affected with the hypoxia, then skeletal cells can withstand for a long time with the hypoxia. So skeletal cells will undergo adaptations and nerve cells are very, very sensitive, so they cannot bear this. Hypoxia, so they will go towards the cell injury. So these were the three parts uh, which determine the stress exceeds limit. First one was about the type of stress, severity, less severe, rotation, more sphere of cell injury, and cell uh, type is also affected. So if the stress now, what is this? If the stress has exceeded the limit, then what's the next step? If the stress exceeds the limit, then cell will undergo cell injury. And the initial phase, initial step of injury is the irreversible cell injury. This is the reversible cell injury 
So now we will discuss about cell, uh, reversible cell energy. What is reversible cell energy? In case of reversible cell energy, hallmark is cell root swelling. We have to keep in mind this point, swelling. In case of reversible cell energy, this is the first sign of the cell energy. What is that? Swelling. First sign of cell energy is swelling. What happens in this case? When there is a no ATP, then sodium potassium pump will not work. We have discussed in the previous lecture, sodium potassium pumps will not work and sodium will be accumulated inside. Then sodium will be accumulated inside, then followed by the water. Water will come inside, and water when will come inside, then it will cause the swelling. Like that. Cell so, uh, will be swelled in the water. Because already sodium inside the cell, then followed by the water, then it will cause the swelling of the cell. So it was the first hallmark of initial phase of cell and the other cell. The next point is leads to loss of macrovilli, membrane flapping, then swelling of rock and plasma adequate. We will discuss these one by one. First, what is this macrovilli? Macrovilli are projections which increase the surface area. These are the projections in the cell that increase the surface area for absorption. And absorption may be, may be any kind, there may be absorption of food from GIT and maybe absorption of salts from proximal tubule. So it's about that. Macrovilli are the projections that increase the surface area and absorb the food and uh, uh, salts helping. But what happens in this case, cellular energy, reversible cellular energy to loss of these macrovilli. Let's suppose that this is a uh, cell and this cell has these macrovilli projections. But what happens in this case? First step, we just don't forget swelling. Then sodium will come out, come inside. Water will also follow the sodium. When water will also follow the sodium, then it will cause the swelling of the cell, and cell will swell like that. So this swelling will cause the loss of macrovilli. Macrovilli will be lost. So macrovilli will be lost, and there, there, when there is a no macrovilli, no surface area, no absorption, so it leads to our the cell or in. The next point is blabbing, membrane blabbing. Same point, don't forget about the swelling. Let's suppose that this is a cell. Sodium will come inside, followed by the water. When water will come inside, then the cell will become swell. When the cell will become swell, then it needs more space for water. So its membrane will blab like that. When its membrane will blab, its membrane will blab for giving the space to water so it will show the blabbing so membrane blabbing is this the third one is swelling of rough endoplasmic radiculum same don't forget about swelling let's suppose that this is a cell and inside the cell these are the endoplasmic radiculum and this is a rough endoplasmic radiculum have ribosomes so these ribosomes <coughs> are attached loosely loosely with rough endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum so what happens when sodium will come inside then water will also come inside and water will go in the rapos uh, sorry water will also go in the rough endoplasmic reticulum then it will go in the rough endoplasmic reticulum it will cause this swelling it will cause the swelling of rough, rough endoplasmic reticulum swelling of rough endoplasmic reticulum cause the release of these ribosomes because it is loosely attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum so ribosomes will be detached. Ribosomes detached. When ribosomes are detached, then ribosomes function as the production of proteins. When these are being detached, then there is the no production of proteins. When no production of proteins, then it is also the sign of the cellular injury. So it was more that. Initial phase of reversible energy for swelling, loss of macrovilli in this case, and membrane blabbing in this case, also the swelling of the phenopalum radicum also caused derangement of ribosome and no protein production. So it was about reversible energy. And next, we will move that. Eventually, damage becomes irreversible. What does mean eventually damage? It does mean that when the stress will be prolonged, when the stress will be prolonged, it will not be removed and it, it, it will be applied for a long time then the reversible injury will be changed into irreversible injury and what is this irreversible injury we will discuss what are the hallmarks of irreversible injury the first uh, hallmark is membrane damage here hallmark was the swelling and here is the membrane damage please don't forget this part like that don't forget this part about membrane damage 
and in this case three types of membrane will be damaged three types of membrane will be damaged the first one is the plasma membrane damage let's this is a cell and this is the plasma membrane and when plasma membrane will be damaged that inside are the enzymes and these enzymes will come out and these enzymes will come out and these enzymes will cause the this is will cause the some kind of inflammation. So it was that. So that's what I would like to give the clinical correlate about this plasma membrane damage. Clinical. What happens? Let's suppose that a patient comes to you and he says that he has a chest pain and you are doubted that he has myocardial infection. Then how can you confirm? Then you, you will take the blood sample from his vein and you will send it to the lab. From lab, you will uh, you can determine that either in his blood sample are the enzymes. If its blood sample contains enzymes, then it clearly does mean that there is an irreversible damage. What will what what if is a patient has a chest pain? Then you will take his blood sample for myocardial infection. Myocardial. infection and in the blood sample if there is a uh, caldic enzymes that suppose that proponin proponin is a caldic enzyme if these are present then it clearly does mean that irreversible damage has been done that suppose that if a patient comes to you and he has a chest pain then you are doubted that he has myocardial infection myocardial infection is irreversible surgery you will take the blood sample from vein and you will send the lab and in the blood sample you will check that if there is a cardiac enzymes, troponin enzymes, if there is a troponin and cardiac enzymes, then it clearly does mean that irreversible damage has been done and from the cardiac cell enzymes that comes out in the blood so these are the cardiac enzymes or troponin enzymes inside the blood so enzymes has come out and plasma membrane damage has been done so cell has been undergone towards the irreversible injury and second part also that when this damage will be done then you know that Calcium is outside of the body, uh, outside of the cell more and inside less. But when that will done that this calcium uh, through the diffusion, uh, 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 through the uh, greater to lower concentration, it will come inside also. Because inside no out greater when this membrane damage will done that calcium will also come inside. And you know that calcium has many many factors. It will cause the destruction of the organelles. So the next damage is about that microcardial damage. Next is about mitochondrial damage. Let's suppose that this is the cell and this is the mitochondria inside the cell. This is the mitochondria. What will happen? It, uh, we will discuss about two cases one and two. You know that electron transport chain, electron transport chain is present on the inner membrane of mitochondria. And what the function of the electron transport chain is the production of ATP. When there will be the damage of the inner membrane of the mitochondria, then electron transport chain will be finished, and then electron transport chain will be destroyed. Then no production of ATP. When no production of ATP, it is also a sign of irreversible injury. Why this is irreversible injury? Because in that case, if the stress is being removed, but now this time inner membrane has been damaged. When inner membrane has been damaged, it clearly does mean that electron transport chain has been damaged. So in this case that if stress is being removed, everything gets normal, then there is a no electron transport chain because it has been destroyed. When electron transport chain has been destroyed, so no ATP, even the stress is being removed, everything is normal, then no ATP production. So if this is a irreversible sign. No, it will it will go not back to its normal state. Second thing is that inside the mitochondria, there is a cytochrome C. Cytochrome C protein and this protein is very very dangerous because this protein is this protein is the apoptotic protein sorry pro apoptotic -apoptotic. in normal case this cytochrome C is being bounded inside the being bounded inside the Mitochondria, but what happens in this case if the mitochondrial membrane ruptures, then this cytochrome 
see protein will come out and it will cause the pro apoptotic because this is the pro apoptotic protein it will cause the ap apoptosis ap apoptosis and this is the irreversible injury There is a big mechanism behind that how cytochrome comes out, the, how this is pro operative, we will discuss in apoptosis later in this lecture. But now just learn that when mitochondrial brain damage and then cytochrome will come out and it is a pro operative protein and it will cause the apoptosis and it is an irreversible cell injury. So it was about the bad account of the brain damage. Next is the lassosomal membrane damage, so easily that. Let's suppose that this is a cell and inside the cell, lassosomes, when this damage will done, then lassosomal enzyme will come out. When enzymes will come out, then they will cause the uh, autophagy of the organelles. Autophagy of organelles. When organelles will be finished, let's suppose that mitochondria will be finished, then there will be no ATP production, no ATP production, and it is a clearly sign of the it is a clearly sign of the irreversible injury. And we have also discussed that so now calcium is also inside. And what is the function of calcium? Calcium's function is the activation of this lysosome also. It will also cause the activation of these enzymes. So now enzymes will become more and more dangerous and it will cause more and more autophagy. So more AT no ATP, more destruction of the organelles. So it is the lysosome of the brain. So when this irreversible damage has been done, what will happen? The end of irreversible, at the last what happens? At the last end of irreversible injury is cell death. Cell will be died. And about the cell die, there are two mechanisms. First one is about necrosis, and second is the apoptosis. First necrosis and second is apoptosis. These are separate you see, uh, big topics. We will discuss these these topics later in next lecture. So thank you so much, guys.